So this is a continuation from the previous exercise that we had. So we are going to have a continuation. Remember, we were being asked to calculate the angles and the sides to find all these, to determine all these. So question number five, which is a continuation there, we are given on A, find CB. All right, I talked about this. If you're given CB or it's AB or it's C and whatever that you're given, this is an indication of a line. So that's line CB. All right, CB, this line. What is it that you can consider? There is something that they are indicating here, an angle and, and this illustration alone, it is telling us something that these two angles are equal. Angle A is equal to angle B. What is it that we know about the type of the triangle like this, where the two angles are equal? That's an isosceles triangle. And from the isosceles triangle, it also follows that this angle, the side that it is opposite to, must be equal to this side, this side here. And this side must be equal, like the sides opposite to these angles that are equal. So angle B to this side, angle A to this side. These sides are supposed to be equal. That is side AC and BC. The properties of an isosceles triangle. So therefore, it follows that AC is going to be equal to BC. So if it is like that, it also means our BC is going to be eight centimeters since BC, uh, since this AC is eight centimeters and it is equal to BC. So therefore our BC was gonna be eight centimeters. You must be able to know this. And a sourceless triangle. B. If angle C, all right, find C if A is equal to 50 degrees. If angle A is equal to 50 degrees, find C. So we want to determine or to find angle C. Given angle A, right? If A is 50, if it's an assumption to assume that A is 50. So if you assume that this is 50 degrees, it means there's a 50 degrees here, but we said A and B are equal from the indication that we are given uh, there. So it means there is also a 50 degrees at B. This is a property of a triangle, of an isosceles triangle. So we can determine the angle at C. We are given two angles, two guys, two angles. You can determine the third one from which concept angles in a triangle, they add up to 180 degrees. So with this, we can determine the angle C. So that is if you add the 50 and the 50 and the angle C, we are supposed to obtain 180 degrees angles in a triangle. 50 plus 50, that is 100, plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees, Take the 100, that side is going to subtract. So it will be minus 100 degrees. It was a positive, this side. Remember your equations. So therefore, angle C was going to be 180 minus 100. 180 minus 100, which is 80 degrees. So that's our angle, which is at C. It was going to be uh, 80 degrees. So we can determine this angle from the properties of the triangle that you're given shapes so understand that find the length of dc df this time okay that's df so again from d to f what is it that you can consider the angles here they're indicating this angle and they're also indicating this angle so just like the previous case this angle at e is opposite to this side this angle at f is opposite to this side. So these sides are supposed to be equal. If this is four millimeters, this also is gonna be four millimeters, all right? So that means in this case, our DF 
is going to be 4 millimeters. We talked about this. Properties of an isosceles triangle. And after that, you are now given uh, to find angle E if D is 100 degrees. If angle D is 100 degrees. If D, this one. If there is an angle there at D and it's given as 100 degrees, what is going to be angle E? Remember from our angles that angle E and F are equal. Angle E is equal to angle F. Okay, from the indication that you are given of these lines here, this one and this one, it shows that these are the angles that are equal. But from there, we also saw that the opposite angles, the opposite sides from these angles will also be equal, four and also four. No problem. So let's just subtract this from 180 degrees because we do understand that angles in a triangle they add up to 180 degrees. So by subtracting this from 180 degrees, we are obtaining angle E and F. 180 degrees like this, minus 100 degrees, we are obtaining E and F combined together. And they are equal. They are combined together and they are equal. So how can we find one of these? Whatever that you are going to have here, you must divide it by two because these two angles, they are equal. So it follows that the angle E was going to be 180 degrees minus 100 divided by 2. The, this angle, you remove it from 180 degrees. You are remaining with these two, these ones. When you remove it from 180, when you subtract it from 180, you remain with E and F. But remember that E is equal to F. So whatever that you have, you divide. It's like you are sharing. Whatever that you are sharing, you divide by two. You are two people. You divide by two. You are sharing in two equal parts. You divide by two. So these two angles, they are going to share the remainder that we are going to have when we subtract. Okay, let's start by subtracting 180 minus this 100. Okay, 180 minus this 100 is going to give us 50 degrees. Oh, so that's 80. Sorry, sorry for that, guys. That's 80 there. So it's going to be 80 degrees. The difference only divide by two. So this is what I want you to, to see on this part of uh, 180 degrees minus 100. This one. The 80 that we are getting here is between these two, is being shared between the, these two angles. They share the same 80 degrees and they are equal. So we have to divide by two because they are equally uh, in size. So therefore, our angle E was going to be 80 divided by two, which is 40 degrees. But remember that angle E and F are equal. So by indicating that our angle E is 40 degrees, we are also saying that the angle that is at F is also 40 degrees. That's an isosceles triangle. So make sure you understand the properties of an isosceles triangle. Two sides that are equal. The angles there must be equal also. That's an isosceles triangle. The properties that are very, very important for you to, to understand in your revisions. All right. So as you can see, uh, this part Question five, question six it was major on a sourceless. Also, if you move on to this question again, look what is there. Work out more unknown angles. We are still going through these questions. Calculate the size of X and Z, angle X and angle Z. This is where we've got our angle X and our angle Z. What is this indication there? What is that? It is to show us that these two sides are equal from y to x and from y to z. Yx is equal to yz. That is what we are given there. That's an isosceles triangle. So what is it that we know about the isosceles triangle? This side opposite to angle z, 
this side opposite to angle X. These angles are supposed to be equal. So angle X from that, angle X is equal to angle Z. So just like how you calculated this one, when you calculated angle, you given this angle, you just subtract from 180, then you divide by two. So we are going to simply find one of these angles. Is it angle X or it's angle Z by subtracting the 24 degrees from 180 degrees. So it's this one from 180. So it means 180 minus 24. But whatever that you get must be divided by two. Remember we said these two angles, they are what? They are equal. So you must divide by two, your answer. So if you subtract, that was going to be uh, 150 degrees over two. If you subtract these two, you obtain 150 degrees. And by dividing this by two, so that we obtain one of the angles, one each, each of the angles, this was going to be uh, 78 degrees. So if this is 78 degrees at X, it also means Z is also uh, 78. Remember we said X and Z are equal. So if X is 78 degrees, okay, therefore our Z also is going to be uh, 78 degrees. That is the idea there. We are just using the properties of an isosceles triangle. What does it, what, what is it that we understand on an isosceles triangle? That is the idea. So let's make more questions as much as we can uh, till we meet again.